Unit 16 Freedom and Liberty Contents 16.1 Introduction 16.2 Berlin's and Republican Theory 16.3 The Value of Freedom 16.4 The Free States and Free Citizens 16.5 Conclusion 16.6 Further Reading Learning Objectives Once you have studied this unit, you should be able to understand the concepts of liberty and freedom from the early thinkers. Also provide different theoretical standpoints of liberty on liberty and freedom as a political value. Access, assess the debate on freedom and liberty. 16.1 Introduction Before we discuss liberty, it will be useful to distinguish the value of liberty from other closely associated terms. Liberalism and liber libertarianism Liber liberalism signals a cluster of political ideals advocated and put into a practice within a tradition of political thought and political activity. Major contribution to the literature of liberalism include thinkers as diverse as Locke, Montecuis, the Federalists, Constant, D. Tocqueville, J. S. Millet, T. H. Green, Karl Popper, P. Hayek, and Laterly, John Rawls and Joseph Ross. Probably the only thing that the United, unites members of this list is that they all subscribe to a strong value of individual liberty. For some, the heart of liberalism is captured in Locke's claims that all men are born free and equal. Others shudder at the commitment to equality. For all, for still others, liberalism requires the opportunity to practice in democratic institutions. Some liberals discount this, insisting that their democracy represents a separate or subordinate value or no value at all or even a threat to liberty. Key liberal themes include the right to private property and advocacy of rule of law as well as defense of the traditional freedoms, freedom of speech and artistic expression, freedom of association, religious freedom, freedom to pursue the work of one's choice and freedom to participate in political dis decision procedures. Liberalism, liber Libertarianism is the theoretical stance of one who strictly limits the competence of government to collective defense, the protection of negative rights, right of non-interference interference, and enforcement of contracts. Liberty, in one sense, can be focused as political value. It is also claimed that liberty is not a value-neutral concept. It is always normative, always a combined by a positive ethical charge. Thus, to describe a condition as one of liberty is to attribute a positive value to it and hence to begin making as a case for it. The distinction between liberty and freedom is also important. The concept of freedom is thinner than that of liberty and carries less evaluate baggage. John Stout's Mill begins his essay on liberty with a disclaimer in the first sense. The subject of this essay is not uh, the so-called liberty of the will, so unfortunately opposed to the misnamed doctrine of philosophical necessity, but civil or social liberty. Box 6.1 Democracy and Civil Liberty Mill may be right to uh, separate these philosophical questions. His specific object limits the range of the concept of liberty since it ought to be an open question whether the question of liberty is exhausted when we have investigated the nature and limits of the power which can be legitimately exercised by social over the individual. Mill imposes these later restrictions liberately because he believes that in his way democracy poses sharp threats to civil liberty. He has in mind the possibility of majority of tyranny and the leveling spirit of democracy, which may lead to an intolerance of social experimentation and personal eccentricity. He believes in the socialization experimentation. He believes in the Tocqueville's reports of democracy at work in America, it gives a measure of power to everyone at the town meeting and Conformity will soon become a parochial priority. This 
dangers are real but liberty may require democratic institutions just as surely as democratic institutions require strong liberties 16.2 berlin's and uh, republican theory we will now turn to an analysis of liberty and freedom isaiah berlin negative and positive philosophy isaiah berlin's inaugural structure to concept of liberty has proved to be one of the seminal contribution to political philosophy in the 20th century berlin's distinguished negativity and positive liberty and negative and positive liberty and on his account this differences of liberty are elicited elicited as the answers to two different questions if we ask what is the area within which the subject a person or a group of person is or should be left to do or be what he is able to do or be without interference from other person we characterize an agent's negative liberty political liberty in this sense is simply the area within which a man can act unobstructed by others if we ask instead what or who is the source of control of interference that can determine someone to do or be or be this rather than that we aim to be describe the agent's positive liberty this is summarized later as the freedom which consists in, in being one's own master negative liberty the clearest exponent of uh, the simplest version of negative liberty was thomas hobbes who defined a free man quite generally as he that in those things which by his strength and which he is able to do is not hindered to do what he has able to negative liberty is often glossed as the absence of coercion where coercion is uh, understood as the uh, liberate interference of other agents negative liberty of the hobbesian kind that is compromised by coercive threats as well as other modes of prevention is often contrasted with theories which imply that mere inability is inhibit liberty this point is made clear by this phrase it is not lack of freedom for people not to fly like a eagle or swim like a whale reflection and action 16.1 outline the concept of negative liberty discussing its shortcomings and make notes in your diary Berlin insists that we should distinguish uh, between the value of negative liberty and the conditions which make the exercise of liberty possible. Thus, there may be freedom of press in a country where most citizens are illiterate. For most, the condition which would uh, give point to the freedom literacy does not obtain. In these circumstances, Berlin would uh, insist that illiteracy does not amount to lack a lack of freedom. clearly nothing is amiss in a society which fails to educate its citizens nary to a level where they can take advantage of central freedoms but that something need not be a lack of freedom a basic education which includes literacy may be an intrinsic good or it may be a human right its provision may be a matter of justice its denial transparent in justice but however this state of affairs is described we should distinguish a lack of freedom from conditions under which it is hard or impossible to exercise a formal liberty this the important point berlin wants us to recognize is that different fundamental values may have conflicts the demand of justice or security may require truncation of liberty or vice versa in circumstances of moral dilemma or irresolvable tragedy Box 16.2 Berlin and positive liberty. Isaiah Berlin defines positive liberty as follows: the positive sense of word liberty derives from the wish on the part of individual to be the, his own master. I wish my life and decisions to depend on myself, not on external forces of whatever kind. I wish to be the instrument of my own, not of other man's actions or will. I wish to be a subject not an object to be moved by reasons by conscious purpose which are my own not by causes which affect me as it were from outside I wish to be somebody or nobody a doer deciding not being decided for self directed and not acted upon by the external nature of 
by man as if I were a thing or an animal or a slave incapable of playing a human role, that is, of conceiving goals and policies of my own and realizing them. This is at least part of what I mean when I say that I am rational and that is my reason for the uh, reasons that distinguishes me as a human being from the rest of the world. I wish above all to be conscious of myself as a thinking, willing and active being, bearing responsibility for my choices and able to explain them by references to my own ideas and purposes. I feel free to the degree that I believe this to be true and enslaved to the degree that I am made to realize that it is not. The analytical summary of Berlin's historical sketch of liberty is as given below. A self-control and self-realization. This involves my working on my own desires, ordering, strengthening, eliminating them in line with the conception of what it is right or good for me to do or be. This is a complex notion with its heart in a sophisticated account of freedom and of action. In modern times, the development of this account can be traced through Locke, Rousseau, Kahn and Hegel. It has re-emerged in the recent work of Harry Frankfurt and Charles Taylor. We are well used to the idea that we exhibit self-control when he, we resist temptation. Freedom of action consists in our ability to appraise the desires which we prompt us to act and to decide whether or not to satisfy them or this account. The parading of freedom consists in our going against what we most want doing what we think best but a hegel point out the best of all worlds for the free agent is that in which what after due reflection we believe is the right thing to do is all also what we can discover we most want b paternalism suppose i am not able to exercise this self-control i may be ignorant of what is best for me I may not understand the full value of alternatives. I may not understand the full value of alternatives. Like the child who does not wish to take the nasty tasting but life-saving medicine, I mistake my real interest. In such circumstances, the wise parent will not be skirmish. She will force the medicine down. Might it not be justifiable then for you to exercise the control over me uh, that I am unable to achieve or sustain. Might not freedom require whatever control over me what that you can exercise, absent of my own powers of self-control. This thought is particularly apt where you are parentalistic intervention creates for me or sustains condition of autonomous choice that my own activities thwart. C. Social self-control. But if I exercise my freedom through self-control and if you promote my freedom by appropriate paternalist intervention, may not my freedom be further enhanced by institutional measures that I endorse. In the Republic of Rousseau, social contract citizens achieve moral and political liberty by enacting laws backed by coercive sanctions which apply to themselves as well as to the others. If as an individual I cannot resist a temptation which will likely cause me harm, wouldn't it be a wise stratagem to devise some social mechanism which will bolster my resolve if I realize that the threat of punishment against me will keep me on the straight and narrow path which wisdom alone cannot get me to follow should in I institute and accept social restraints which are more forceful than my unaided moral powers and in doing so don't I expand my true freedom. C. State servitude An unwise citizen unable to exercise immediate self-control and insufficiency for seeing to enact or endorse devices of social coercion can nevertheless attain freedom indirectly and at second hand if the state expects the necessary control, notwithstanding his disapproval or lack of participation, the state can control us in the service of our real interest and thereby make us free. 16.3. The value of freedom. 
Marx's conception of freedom is in fact quite close to the notion of autonomous self-control taken by Durkheim and is definitely not be identified with the utilitarian view. The words free and the rational are as closely associated in Marx's writing as they are in that of Hegel. Hegel uh, dismissed the notion implicit in utilitarianism that a man is free to the degree that he can do whatever his inclination lead him to desire. The man in the street thinks he is free if it is open to him to act as he pleases, but, he is, but his very arbitrary implies that he is not free. Freedom is not the exercise of egoism, but it is in fact opposed to it. A course of action is arbitrary rather than free. If it simply involves irrational uh, choice among alternative courses of action which the individual is liberated, an animal which chooses is in a situation of adversity to fight rather than to run from an enemy does not thereby act freely. To be free is to be autonomous and thus not impelled by either external or internal forces beyond rational control. This is why freedom is a human prerog prerogative because only man through his membership of society is able to control not only the form but also the content of violation. In Hegel's view, this is possibly given the identification of the individual with the rational ideal. For Marx, it presupposes concrete social reorganization, the setting up of a communist society. Box 16.3 Individual and Society The position of the individual in society will be analogous to the characteristic, for instance, uh, of the scientist within the scientific community. A scientist who accepts the norms which define scientific activity is not less free than one who liberally rejects them. On the contrary, by being a member of the scientific community, he is also to participate in a collective enterprise which allows him to en enlarge and to creatively employ his own individual capacities. In this way, acceptance of moral requisite is not the acceptance of alien constraint, but is the recognition of the rational. This is not uh, to say that there are no important differences in the uh, uh, repeat, uh, respective standpoints of Marx and Durkheim which can be regarded as the historical significance. Durkheim is emphatic that the individual personality is overwhelmingly influenced by the characteristic of the form of society in which he exists and into which he is soci socialized. But he does not accept a complete historical relativism in this, as in this respect, every man, no matter whether he is primitive or civilized or is a homo duplex in the sense that there is an opposition in every individual because between egoistic impulses and those which have a moral con con connotation. Marx does not adopt such psychological model in Marx's conception. There is no uh, social basis for such an implicit antagonism between the individual and society. For Marx, the individual is the social being. Individual human life and species life are not different things. The egoistic opposition between the individual and the society which is founded in particularly marked form in Burgoy's society is an outcome of the development of the division of labor. Durkheim's identification of the duality of human personality on the other hand is found upon the supposition that the ego of the infant deriving from the biological drives which with he is born can never be reversed or eradicated completely by the subsequent moral development of the child. Both Marx and Durkheim stressed the historical, historical dimensions in the conditioning of human needs. For Durkheim, equation become a threat to social unity only within the context of a form of society in which human sensibilities have become a greatly expanded and all evidence Compel us to expect our effort in the struggle between the two beings within us to increase with the growth of civilization. Reflection and Action 16.2 Describe the egoistic opposition between individual and society. Can this be reversed or eradicated? Unless what we see, what we want in its, uh, is itself of some value, the freedom is to pursue it is just about worthless. So freedom of thought and discussion is valuable because 
thought and uh, discussions is invaluable in the other most in the in the most impressive recent work on freedom joseph ross suggests that freedom is of value since it is defined as a condition of personal autonomy a freedom of action to act freely reason must be brought to bear on my desires important elements of free action can be traced in locke rousseau Kahn, and most thoroughly in hegel's philosophy of right it captures one strand of thinking about autonomous action we are free when we are in control of what we do acting against that what phenomenologically are our strongest desires when this is called for by reason or morali- morality or the ethical demands of communities we recognize as authoritative b autonomy the value of freedom can be swiftly interfered it is the value of getting what we want doing as we please thus the value of freedom is instrumental it amounts to the value of whatever we want which our freedom is instrumental in enabling us to get if we are unfree in a given respect we either cannot get or can get only at too great a cost of risk or punishment generally whatever is the object of our desire this account of the value of freedom has the great virtue of being simple and straightforward moreover it enables us to rank freedoms in respect of their value to us this is to be a function of the value of the activities that freedom permits the more important is the object of desire the more important the freedom to get it the more serious the restrictions in cases where we are made unfree we can grant the kantian autonomy is exercised under the conditions of freedom which permits agents significant opportunities to work out what is the right to things to do but if this is the core value of freedom we may find that freedom does not provide the best circumstances in which autonomy may be developed see moral freedom <laughs> on rousseau's account this is the freedom which is attained by those who can control their own desires it is developed further in kant's account of autonomous willing which stresses how we bring to bear our resources of rational deliberate deliberate in the face of our heteronymous desires those desires which we are caused to suffer by the nexus of our internal human nature and external nature if we follow reason's guidance as well as act freely willing actions which is must be possible in principle for all to accomplish laws which all must be able to follow the laws which keep us and our fellow citizens on what we recognize to be the straight and narrow path of duty do not infringe our liberty this is a dangerous argument and the danger comes from two different quarters first there is the obvious threat that the others may determine what our duty requires and then regiment us to perform it this danger is avoided so long as we insist that the moral liberty which is achieved by the state of caution the product be the product of political liberty of democratic institution the second threat is that the democratic majorities may be may getting it wrong proscribing under penalty of imp- imprisonment and like measures of punishment activities which are innocent since the decisions of democratic bodies do not of themselves constitute verdicts on what is or is not morally acceptable this is a permanent possibility the pursuit of moral liberty may land us in political chains box 16.4 limits of democracy there are a number of complementary answers the first is that we should buttress our specification of the institutions which promote political liberty with some conditions that sets limits on the competence of democratic decision procedures the second and explicit explicit implications of mills principle is a public recognition that the wrongs which may be prohibited consistently with liberty do not include wrongs which citizen may do to otherwise alone that is the issue of paternalism de tolerance toleration if there is a much thing as a liberal bar show it is li- tolerance tol- toleration but as one commentator said it seems to be at once necessary and impossible toleration is necessary because folk who 
लाइव लीव टूगेदर मे फाइंड दैट देर आर डीप डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन देयर मॉरल बिलीव विच कैन नॉट बी सेटल बाई आर्ग्यूमेंट फ्रॉम एग्रीड प्रमिस इट इज इम्पॉसिबल बिकॉज ऑफ द सर्कमस्टेंसेस ऑफ डीप कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विच कॉल फॉर द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ टॉलरेशन विच ऑल टू ऑफन डिस्क्राइब इन टर्म्स ऑफ द ऑब्सटिट्यूडनेस ऑब्सटिट्यूशनेस एंड सब स्टबोनस ऑफ द कॉन्फ्लिक्टिंग पार्टीज these differences historically have been of a kind that causes savage conflicts the point of disagreement may seem trivial to a neutral observer toleration requires one not to be interfere in conduct which one believes to be morally wrong for instance think of a state with majority and minority religions or more generally one with religious divisions and where the power to legislate is in the hands of one religious community alone should the state tolerate those who do wrong in the minds of the legislators by breaking the dietary laws their religion prescribes briefly it may be argued that the morality ha- has a universal dimension which is believe believed by one who conceives its source to be an authoritative religious ex- text of course the believer will affirm the universal authority of the prescriptions one can't expect much problems to be so swiftly settled but the direction of the liberal argument can be easily grasped 16.4 free states and free citizens Rousseau says that uh, in the state of nature our freedom derives from our free will our capacity to resist the desires which press us together with our status as independent creatures neither subject to the demands of other nor depend on them to get what we want as contractors we shall be satisfied with nothing less than that social state which best approximate to this na- natural condition natural freedom is lost but the thought of it gives us a moral benchmark by which we can appraise the institutions of contemporary society in society a measure of freedom can be recovered along three dimensions moral freedom we have already discussed democratic freedom and civil freedom a democratic freedom the essence of the case of democracy as a dimensions of freedom is simple democracy affords its citizens the opportunity to participate in making the decisions which as laws will govern their conduct for can autonomous action consist in living in accordance with the laws which one has uh, t- determined for uh, on self as po- possible for each agent to follow democracy represent a rough political analog of this model freedom consists of living in accordance with the laws one has created as applicable to all citizens one self included berlin argued that democracy is a very uh, different ideal to liberty major decisions can threaten liberty as js mill argued it is a mistake to view this consideration plausible through it may be as decisive any system other than democracy will deny citizens the opportunity to engage in a, an activity that may many regard as valuable democratic activity gives us the chance to assert that we are free of claims of authority democracy may be necessary for to freedom but it carries its own distinct distinctive threats be civil liberty citizens who value liberty and express this through their participation in democratic institutions which liberty requires will in all consistency be reluctant to interfere in the lives of their fellows whatever by law or less formal mechanisms their deep concerns to establish institutions which empower everyone will make them cautious about introducing measures which constraints individual choice accepting the necessity of democratic institutions and their associative freedom valuing strongly uh, the f- opportunities this offered for citizens to embody uh, their various conceptions of the good life in constitutional and prescriptive laws they will be hesitant to constrain their own pursuit of these values to the rational man it is a miserable thought that the others may def- defy the canons of rationality just as we are prepared to approve 
external constraints on our decision making recognition of our vulnerability to temptation so to must we be prepared to adopt institutions which guard against the most of human folly 16.5 conclusion Berlin's work on liberty represented a notable advance on the prevailing stand standards of philosophical correctness he shows that an important ethical concept is susceptible of at least two and possibly 200 different analyses there is no one coherent way of thinking about liberty liberty there are at least two and this amount each of them to reach traditions each tradition dissolving into this des, des, desperate components which challenge fellow contenders of the for the torch of the best way of thinking about the values of liberty if there are many ways of thinking clearly about liberty as about to select a, as most apt to characteristic judgment about the importance of liberty as a political value the accounts of selections are complex and following are the chief characteristics basically agents are free when they are not hindered in their pursuit of what they take to be the good life hindrances are to be constructed widely in a political or more widely social context they will include laws hacked by the sanctions as well as the coercive instruments of positive morality but the individuals can also claim to be unfree when governments in particular fail to empower with them in sufficient measures to attain level of accomplishment which are the necessary preconditions of a life which is authentically their own political institutions can foster liberty on their capacious understanding in a range of ways a sound theory of liberty should recognize the the genus face of the criminal law in particular it can be severe as protection de demarcating with the force of sanctions the boundaries which freedom requires if the pursuit of the good life is to be safe within them governments and citizens individually should be modest in the respect of both their ambitions and uh, effectiveness concerning the likelihood of their interference promoting the good of their help, helpless and obdurate fellow citizens 16.6 further reading capitalism and modern social theory and other book is 50 great contemporary thinkers from structural life to postmodernity thank you this is the end of the unit 16